Hi, Alex here. Today I will be doing this derivation of a theorem using only the ten basic rules of sentential logic. Uh, remember, a theorem is a zero premise proof, so there's nothing sort of we can do automatically right off the bat. What we will do is we'll write out the show line of this entire thing and we'll break it down properly. Now the trick to breaking it down is always to find the main connective, so we just need to ask what is the main connective of uh, this show line, uh, which is the same as the conclusion, and I realize that it is the conditional. So I start a conditional derivation by assuming CD here, and then I will have to show this big leftover thing. So I'll just write that out, show not bracket Q or not R, and not Z by conditional P, arrow, not Z, and R. After I write a show line, I always have to stare at it and figure out what the main connective is. Well, I look and I realize the main connective again is a conditional here, so I can do another assume CD. Not Q or not R, and not Z by conditional P, and that is another assume CD. And on line 5, uh, I really just need to show not Z and R. Now I can write in the assume ID at this point if I want to. There's no harm just in case I actually need it uh, and it's fine to leave there. At this point I'm basically looking for automatic moves. I've done the basic show uh, breaking down of the show line so my automatic moves just come from uh, line 4 which is a simplification. So I'll just simplify those into its two conjuncts. Uh, line 8 is not Z by conditional P. And that is line 4 simplify, line 4 simplify. Now I'm going to mark the important lines. Line 2 is obviously important, that's quite nice. Line 4 is not important, the reason why is because I have better versions of it on line 7 and 8. Line 6, eh, it's sort of important, I'll mark it. Now at this point I have no more automatic moves to do and I'm sort of stuck. I know I've broken down the show line, that's step one. I know I did all my automatics, that's step two. So typically what I would do in a basic rules derivation is look for some structure to help guide me through this. Now I realize that my latest show line, which is always the one I look at, is a conjunction. So structurally speaking, what I have to do is I have to show both conjuncts separately. So that actually tells me what I should do next. On line nine, what I'm just going to do is show not Z. And I immediately AID that to get Z, and that's assume or ASS ID. Either is fine. So this will be the left conjunct if I'm able to succeed. Now again, typically I would look for more automatic moves to do, but there are none, so I'm sort of stuck. In this case, I don't really worry. What I look for is contradiction generators, because I've already tackled my structure. There's nothing else to look for. Now, here are my contradiction generators here. How do I know they're contradiction generators? Because they're a negation of something, and I do not have my derived rules uh, to De Morgan's this or negation of biconditional this to open things up. So all I can do is build the inside such that they will contradict, and my proof was over. So what I'm looking to do is build the contradiction of one of these. But I should realize, if I'm showing not Z and my assume ID is Z, I'm probably not going to succeed building Q or not R, because I don't have Q or R anywhere around. But I will succeed in building this biconditional. Now remember, if I want to build a biconditional, I really just need to show both ways. And if I show both ways, then I can link them up using conditional to biconditional, and that's actually um, the end result. So I'm not going to bother writing out the show line for the full biconditional. I could actually just show very easily uh, Z arrow P, which is just one direction. Now, of course, I immediately assume CD. And I could write out show P assume ID for not P, but I'm not going to bother. The reason why is I actually know that I have P already available. So I'm going to repeat P, so that's to repeat, and just say, hey, that's my consequent. I've just done a conditional derivation. Now the showing of the other direction is equally as easy. It's P arrow Z, and on 15 I assume P, so that's assume CD, and on 16 again I will say Z, and that is from line 10, repeat conditional derivation. 
Now on line 17, I can just join them up, and I get Z by conditional P, um, and that is from line 11 and 14, conditional by conditional. Now before I finish this line off, I'm going to point something out. Over here, I actually repeated uh, line 2, and I repeated line 10 to do uh, my CD. And the question is, why do I need to repeat it? Why can't I just say, oh, there's line 2 CD? Well, the rules of closing conditions is whenever I have a close, which is a, con a CD, an ID, or a DD, uh, I must make sure that my closing conditions fall underneath my current show, within the box that I'm going to put together. That's why I repeat it. So over here, I have Z by conditional P on line 17. Great, that contradicts with line 8. So can I just write line 8 ID? to say the contradiction? And the answer is no. The reason why is line 8 does not fall under my current show, because my current show starts at line 9. So to fix that, all I have to do is say line 8 repeat and then ID. And then that is actually taking care of the fact that I always need everything to be under my present show line. Okay, so that was pretty straightforward. Now what I'm going to do is close that. Now what I'm going to do is show the other side, which is my R. So on line 18, I will write show R. 19, not R. And that's assume ID. Now, again, I'm looking to build a contradiction. I, I shouldn't gamble on Z by conditional P because I don't have any Zs, but here Q or not R from my contradiction generator that I flagged, oh, that's a really actually very simple contradiction. I just need to build the inside, Q or not R. But to build a disjunction, I only need one side, which I already conveniently have. So I can immediately say Q or not R, that's 19 uh, addition. Now I could, at this point, write 7 repeat ID, but let's say I didn't want to, let's say I actually just wanted to spend the line to repeat, that's no big deal, that's 7 repeat, and of course I could write 20 ID, but if I don't want to, I can actually now just spend a blank line and say 20, 21 ID. So this is sort of the long way to close it out. Now that I've shown R, this is the other half of my conjunction of my previous show line on line 5. So to finish this, I just need to say not Z and R from line 9 and 18 adjoin. And this is a direct derivation because it is exactly what I was looking for in my show line. Now that I've closed off this big important show line, the rest of the proof is just closing off two more and it's very straightforward. This one was a conditional derivation. So on line 24, I point to the consequent and say under the assumption of line 4, I showed line 5 using a conditional derivation. And I do it one more time by saying line 3, CD, box, and close. Okay, so this is a nice example of a theorem. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, what I want to point out is that we proceeded in the sort of standard way. We went for the breakdown of the show line, and that got us all the way to line 6. Once we did that, we did automatic moves. That got us down to line 8. And then we got stuck. After automatic moves, we look for some structure, and we are guided by the previous show line. That told us we needed not Z and R. But again, we got stuck, and then we moved to look for contradiction generators, which were 7 and 8, and that helped realized that we needed to show Z arrow P, P arrow Z to get Z by conditional P, and over here to get Q or not R. So we basically went through our checklist to help ourselves get unstuck over and over again. Okay, give this one a shot. Good luck.